This video should be used as a supplement to the operator's manual. Read and understand the contents of the operator's manual before using the mower. Before removing the mower from the crate for assembly, inspect the crate for any obvious signs of shipping damage. Lift up the protective plastic covering the mower and look for any flat tires or other cosmetic damage to it. If you find any damage to the mower at this point, contact your field team support at 330-558-7921 and explain what you have found. Cub Cadet mowers are shipped in wooden crates that are either returnable or disposable. Returnable crates have printed instructions stapled to the crate that describe how to disassemble the crate and return them to the factory. You will need a 9 16 inch wrench or a socket and a number 3 Phillips screwdriver to disassemble a returnable crate. A disposable crate, on the other hand, is assembled using a combination of staples and hex screws or Phillips head screws. These tools will be useful for disassembling the crates. A heavy hammer, a large pry bar, a battery operated drill, and bits for a quarter inch hex socket and Phillips screws. Side cutters or heavy duty scissors to cut any tie down straps. A utility knife to remove plastic wrap. For assembly of the equipment, you will need a 3 8 inch drive ratchet set that includes a 1 half inch deep socket, 9 16 inch deep socket, a short extension for the sockets, a set of wrenches that include a 7 16 9 16 3 8 5 8 3 quarter, half inch, and 1 and 1 quarter inch wrench, rags or shop towels to check oil or wipe off the equipment, a 6 inch rule or small tape measure. You will also need a tire inflation gauge and compressed air source with a chuck to set the tire pressure. The rider is crated in a number of ways. A rider with a returnable crate will include instructions for removing the rider from the crate and returning the crate to the factory. A disposable crate will be assembled using a combination of staples, hex screws, and Phillips head screws. Determine how the crate lid is attached to the crate sides. Using the appropriate tools, Remove the crate lid. A drill driver with the correct bits and a large hammer and pry bar will get the job done. Set the lid aside. Continue using the appropriate tools to remove the sides of the crate and set them aside. Caution. Many staples are typically used to secure the crate pieces. Be certain the staples are folded down for your safety and that the tires are not punctured when rolling the tractor from the crate base. Remove the plastic film covering the tractor. Locate and remove the manual pack from the rear of the tractor. Review the setup procedures in the operator's manual. Cut any plastic tie straps securing the front and rear of the tractor to the crate base. Check the tire pressure in each tire. All tires are overinflated at the factory during assembly and may need air to be removed. The correct tire pressure requirements will be on the sidewall of the tire. If the unit is rejected due to flat tires, contact the manufacturer. Place the shift lever in the neutral position. Disengage the parking brake if it is engaged. Raise the cutting deck height lever to the highest position. With a helper, carefully roll the tractor from the crate. Discard the plastic film and the wooden crate pieces in an environmentally appropriate manner. Recycle all hardware. If the discharge chute is propped in the up or shipping position, 
Remove the shipping brace by holding the chute with one hand as you remove the shipping brace with the other. Carefully lower the discharge chute down. If the rider has been shipped with the discharge chute removed, attach the chute using the supplied fasteners. Follow the instructions written in the operator's manual. The tractor is typically shipped with the battery cables disconnected. Attach the red positive cable to the positive terminal on the battery using the hardware provided. Place the red protective rubber cover over the positive terminal. Then connect the black negative cable to the negative terminal of the battery. Be certain not to bridge the gap between the positive and negative terminals with your wrench. Check the tractor deck to confirm the deck is level. The blade tip height will have to be checked from front to rear and side to side. With the engine off and the power takeoff PTO lever disengaged, place the deck height lever in the middle position. To measure front to back pitch, Wearing gloves, rotate the cutting blades until one of the blades is parallel with the frame. Caution: The blades are extremely sharp. Using a tape measure, measure the height from the front blade tip to the ground and the rear blade tip to the ground. The front tip of the blade should be one quarter to three eighths of an inch closer to the ground than the rear tip. Adjust the length of the front deck hanger bracket to change the height of the blade tip. Lengthen the hanger bracket to lower the blade tip, or shorten the hanger bracket to raise the blade tip. The deck should be level from side to side, and is changed using the adjuster on the left rear side of the deck hanger bracket just below the frame. Again, wearing gloves, rotate the cutting blades so they are perpendicular to the frame of the tractor. Measure the blade tip to the ground on one side of the mower deck, then measure the blade tip to the ground on the other side. Both heights should match. Loosen the small hex bolt, securing the large hex height adjuster to the hanger bracket. Rotate the height adjuster to raise or lower the deck. Turning the adjuster clockwise raises the left side of the cutting deck, while turning it counterclockwise lowers the left side of the cutting deck. Make small adjustments and measure the side-to-side -side height. Repeat until the deck is level. Tighten the hex lock nut when finished. Check the oil level in the engine. Remove the dipstick and confirm that oil is indicated near the middle of the hash marks on the dipstick. Add oil if necessary.